Good afternoon. Uh, welcome everybody uh, to this webinar about the tender for CBI market intelligence studies. Um, my name is uh, Arthur Scheinert. I'm here together uh, with my uh, colleague uh, Jantien de Rutte. Uh, we are program managers uh, for CBI and we are happy to uh, announce today our new tender that will be for the tender period 2023-2027. Um, this tender will be for four sectors. Uh, that is namely the apparel section uh, sector, the home decoration, home textile sector, the tourism sector, and the outsourcing uh, sector. Um, today's, today's webinar is meant for uh, market researchers, individual market researchers, market research companies, uh, for experts, for consultants, um, and we hope uh, to give you a quick overview um, of what uh, the tenders uh, comprise of, and especially for companies that do not know CBI yet, to give you also some insight in our organization. So um, we are using the GoToWebinar uh, software today. Uh, this means that uh, there's a couple of rules of play, so to say, that I would like to explain. Uh, first of all, if you have any audio problems, um, you can try uh, the phone call option. Uh, you can also try to switch between options until it works. Um, uh, in case of any questions, you can also uh, write us by chat and our technical team will uh, answer you. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, we cannot see or we cannot hear you. Um, so all questions that you have during the uh, during the webinar, you can type into the questions box and we have reserved uh, 15 minutes at the end of this uh, webinar uh, to answer your questions. Um, and there will be not be any polls today, but uh, that is one of the options that we sometimes use. Um, so a short overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, I will first give an overview of the tender. Uh, then my colleague uh, Jantien uh, will uh, introduce uh, CBI. Um, then I will speak about what we're looking for, the tender profile, uh, a little bit more of insight uh, on tips on how to, uh, uh, how to start with your tender. Uh, then my colleague Jantin will uh, lead you through the planning. And then, as already mentioned, at the end we have the Q&A. Um, so for uh, listeners that are completely new to CBI, a uh, very short overview. And this is CBI mission. So CBI, uh, at CBI, we support the transition towards inclusive and sustainable economies. And we do this by strengthening the sustainability of SMEs in developing countries. Um, we encourage exports of value added products to Europe and to the local region of SMEs. Um, so two secondary objectives we have uh, at CBI, we work to promote and create uh, decent jobs and we stimulate sustainable trade and production. Um, furthermore, as background, we are part of the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, RVO, and we are funded by the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And then uh, the topic of today, market intelligence. Uh, we are a um, small sub-department of CBI, and within uh, CBI's mission, it is our focus uh, to develop the export and sustainability skills of SMEs in the target countries. And uh, we work specifically on, not surprisingly, uh, to remove the lack of good quality market information obstacle. So this is uh, still one of the main constraints SMEs from developing countries face when seeking to export. And we aim to remove this constraint by uh, conducting, publishing and disseminating market studies, both through our website and as well uh, through our sustainable development projects in the target countries. Um, our market studies help SMEs to capitalize on export opportunities and to increase their local impact with regards to sustainability. Um, so for today's session, um, after today, um, you uh, will know more about the content and planning of our tenders, um, CBI in particular, the market intelligence department, and lastly, whether your skills and knowledge are a match with CBI. Then short overview of the tender. So the tender uh, is just a couple of days ago uh, been opened. We are tendering at this moment uh, four lots, which is uh, market research for apparel, home deco, home textiles, ITO and BPO outsourcing and tourism. A quick answer to a quick question that probably many of you have. CBI has 14 sectors. So what happens to the other 10 sectors? Um, those other sectors, the agricultural sectors, uh, will follow in a second tender, uh, which is uh, open in August 2022. So if that's one of your sectors, and then you still have to have a little bit of patience still. 
And for both of these two tenders, um, we have a maximum of two lots that you can uh, subscribe to. Uh, more information uh, on this you can find on the tender announcement on the CBI website. There's a link at the bottom of this uh, slide deck and at the tender publication at TenderNet. There's another link there. And we've put these links uh, throughout this presentation uh, for you also because we will send you the presentation afterwards and then you can quickly uh, yeah, find where, uh, relevant information. And then estimated values uh, for over four years. Um, so you can see that uh, we estimate at CBI that uh, the tourism sector will be the largest sector uh, with a maximum of 460. Um, then we have two uh, medium large sectors, which are apparel and home decoration, home textiles, 320 and 325. And then we have the outsourcing sector with a maximum of uh, 220,000 euros. Um, the description of the tender. So um, the supplier that uh, in the end uh, will win this tender will be working on market studies and other deliverables. And it is very important to mention uh, that the supplier will have to follow the CBI format. Uh, all deliverables have to meet the requirements as described in our uh, terms of reference, uh, TOR CBI market studies uh, 2021, uh, 2022, sorry. Um, and what does that mean? A CBI format um, for each deliverable, uh, we describe uh, the context, uh, the deliverables, and per deliverable, we highlight what is the learning goal, what, what requirements does the content have to fit, what is the structure that you have to use, what are demands for visualization, um, and we have a, a working process. So more information on that you can find in Annex 9 of the, of the tender. And then the deliverables. Um, well, at CBI, uh, all our market research is about uh, the European market. That's our main target market. And within that uh, yeah, target market, we uh, make two types of studies or three types of studies. Uh, the first is sector studies. It's a study that's called what is the demand, which describes yeah, basically the demand of the European market, uh, the top markets and the top products. Then we have a study uh, into trends trends that offer opportunity, opportunities and trends that offer threats. And then we have a study about buyer requirements. Uh, then we have studies uh, that focus not on the sector, but specifically on the product. It's called the product fact sheet. And we have studies that focus on a particular country market, which is called the country fact sheet. And then the last category that we have are tip studies. Um, we have a number of tip studies. You can also find these uh, on our website. Uh, most of these studies uh, we already uh, create at this moment. For example, finding buyers, doing business, organizing your exports, how to benefit from digitalization. Um, all of these studies we currently produce and we will continue to produce them. And then there's uh, two new studies that we will start with in uh, 2023. And the first one is how to apply environmental sustainability in your company and the last one is how to make your business socially socially sustainable um, then there's another uh, couple of uh, deliverables which are not studies um, the first couple of those are what we call uh, promotional deliverables so we write news articles that are related to the studies um, we do live presentations um, for example on the industry fairs more about that will follow later and we also do live webinars uh, about the studies. And lastly, um, we at CBI, we're uh, well known uh, about the focus groups where we bring together um, Euro European industry stakeholders together and exchange information for studies and for our projects. And besides a live focus group, uh, we also um, do uh, online focus groups. So again, same as in last slide, um, the links you can find examples are at the bottom of the page. Um, a last couple of points. Um, when making a study, um, we can ask a supplier to write a completely new study from scratch. So that's uh, desk research, field research, and um, starting with a blank page. Or the other option is to uh, create an update of an existing study. So that can be the study made last year or maybe uh, a couple of years earlier and to update uh, the content um, of that study. 
uh, for more information on all of the deliverables, uh, please check out our terms of reference, Market Studies 2023. And you can find that in the tender docum documentation under Annex 9. And then I will give the word uh, to my colleague uh, Jan Tien to tell you a little bit more about CBR. And there you go. Yes, good afternoon and uh, thank you very much, uh, Arthur. And um, I will indeed uh, take you, um, try to do it as quick and as clear as Arthur has been doing the first part to introduce you to, uh, to so what is CBI, the market intelligence uh, uh, team actually uh, doing. And um, so for who do we make our market intelligence? Is uh, well, people like Andrew, like uh, Aishara from uh, Tanzania, uh, Cyber from Pakistan. Uh, these are all uh, SMEs that in the past we have uh, helped them um, through projects from the CBI. And to give you an idea of our target group, um, they are active in different sectors, in 14 sectors. And so, exactly what is MI? the CBI MI target group. We uh, connect small to medium-sized exporters from uh, developing countries to the European market. And we define the European market, um, the 27 EU countries, UK, UK and the EFTA countries. And the developing countries, we use the um, OSADAC dust list of the uh, ODA recipients and CBI primarily targets the so-called least developed countries other low income countries and lower and middle income countries. And we work um, primarily with uh, SMEs who are exporting to Europe or want to export to Europe, uh, European markets. They are companies that have between 25 up to 500 employees. And depending on the sector in which we are active um, and on the products, these SMEs can be exporting to producers like farmers or cooperatives or exporting processors, traders, um, but also um, providers which sell their services to European markets. So like in the tourism sector, you have the tour operators from developing countries. And we are actually pretty proud of uh, what we have achieved in 2021. So uh, we uh, monitor our visitors by page views or users. And last year we had um, just over 2 million uh, page viewers um, and 44% of our page viewers on um, our studies are from developing countries. Of course, we would like to increase that more, but it's, it's a very good start. Um, and you can see that the users are also quite high, uh, just below the uh, 1 million, but uh, above our goals that we have put on, um, on our online users for 2021. And uh, I give you just a few, a short overview, um, who is our team uh, within Markets Intelligence? So we have uh, Arthur, who just presented the first part um, of this webinar. We have uh, Thomas, we have uh, Sana, and we have Maya, and of course myself. And we have our sector, 14 sectors divided by our program managers. So each of us is responsible for her or his sector and is also then your um, first uh, contact person if it concerns the sector that you are um, active in. So uh, what do we do exactly as uh, market uh, intelligence? We have within the whole team of CBI, we um, design uh, projects in developing countries and we have certain um, items that we, uh, we have in our products. So we have the company coaching, for example, the training. We have the export enabling uh, environment uh, program and we have then the EU market entry. And these projects can be put in uh, over 24 countries where uh, CBI is uh, active. And what we aim to do is that we uh, make our studies between 250 to 300 studies uh, per year in 14 sectors. We publish them all for free on our website, on the cbi.eu market in, in info. And our um, goal is that we have a broad target audience of readers in all developing countries. So not only the focus countries, 
from CBI, but all the countries that we have. And um, moreover, especially for the CBI projects, we can uh, create really tailored studies within the, um, the design of the uh, CBI project. So here is the uh, the link to our website. So as Arthur mentioned before, have a look at how we um, publish our studies there, how it looks like, and what the SMEs can expect there, at, at what kind of information we provide them. This is an example of uh, how we uh, publish our studies on the website. We aim to have the same feel and look for all the sectors. But here you can find uh, the product fact sheets that we have. Um, it is easy access, um, also easy access for on smartphones. So not only by computer, but also by smartphones. It's written in easy to understand English. This is very important for our target group because English is not their most of the time, not number one uh, language that they speak. So we have all our studies on our website on level B1 and it should be very practical and hands on information. And as I said before, it's all available free of charge. So anyone who is, has interest in our sectors, our studies can read the, uh, the studies. We uh, have live presentations, which we um, can present, for example, on a, on a fair uh, or to our uh, project um, attendees from, from our projects, to, our, uh, to SMEs, to BSOs, so business support organizations. And there we uh, do live presentations on the findings that we have in our market studies. And it could be on market analyze studies, or for example, on market entry studies. And we give um, these, um, here we have, uh, excuse me, a sample, which we have done in uh, the African Fine uh, Coffee Conference. It was a wide audience of coffee people who had really very high interest on the market analyze studies we make for the coffee sector. And we go there and we make the presentation. We also do um, webinars and it's between one to one and a half hour online uh, presentation. Also on the findings that we have on our market studies and um, there it's also free of charge so anyone can attend our webinars, but the main target group of course is our SMEs and BSOs and sector associations from uh, developing countries and of course our EU impor importers as we try to connect uh, both to each other. And here, if you find, when we send you the presentation, you can have a look at the examples of uh, webinars and presentations we have done so far. Uh, we will um, indeed reintroduce the uh, focus groups. There is um, a high demand that we start organizing again the focus group. It's um, either half day offline sessions or everyone together, which um, obviously is possible again or if we have many people from around the world who will be entering into the focus group, we can of course do this online, then it will obviously be shorter, uh, two to two and a half hours. And the goal basically of focus group is to, um, that we have within the sector, the uh, stakeholders all together. So the European importers or buyers, uh, the wholesalers, trend watchers, or certification authorities, sector associations, uh, our own people from uh, CBI, from the projects, um, our experts. And it's it's basically to gather, exchange and analyze and well uh, validate the information, uh, which all can be the input to the market studies. And of course, also to our projects. So where do we... Um, where do they read our uh, market intelligence uh, studies? Well, here we have the uh, top 10 countries from last year. And um, so 43% of the users are from developing countries all around the world. And 20% is from where we are, what we call the CBI focus countries, where we have now pro projects uh, running. So you see here uh, Sri, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Kenya. So for us, that's very good because, of course, we also want to um, have a high view in those countries. Um, 
the presentation that we have done so far, we have put here some examples, um, like for tourism, um, for the business support organizations in Kenya, we had had a present, live presentations during uh, Anura Fair in uh, Germany. We even combined uh, two uh, sectors uh, because both uh, for both sectors it was quite interesting. We have done uh, for natural ingredients, also for the business support organization in Indonesia. Um, we have uh, done, as I mentioned, for, for coffee in Kenya, cocoa uh, during the Choco in Amsterdam, and for apparel in the uh, Paris, um, for the apparel sourcing fair. And how do we make these market studies? Well, we do that by, um, of course, desk research. We do this by, um, as I mentioned, focus groups where we gather the information. We do so by visiting fairs or seminars, or you can follow webinars, for example. And uh, what we find quite important is interviews and or company visits, but especially interviews with the companies, um, where we do get um, very high um, uh, quality of information, which is very useful for our uh, studies. So the research method and the working process we work in is the contractor um, for this tender needs to conduct in the in-depth primary and second secondary market research and to answer the research questions. And primary research includes, as I mentioned, the interviews with European buyers and industry associations, sector experts and certification body, et cetera. And within the sector, what is most important is to do these interviews, what is uh, relevant to the uh, sector. And within the interviews with we European buyers, we as program managers from uh, CBI market intelligence teams also would like to be in, involved in, in certain interviews. Um, but that will be explained uh, more into that when uh, the contract will be uh, concluded with the winner. Arthur, can you still see my screen? Yes. Okay, I got a message that it was stopped sharing, but okay, thank you, sorry. Um, there will be, um, once the, the contract is um, concluded, with, there will be a yearly assignment with a yearly program. Um, so, of course, within the scope of the tender, but we have therefore a 12 step working process from uh, contracting to topic selection, selections to research and proofreading phases up to approval, invoicing, and final publication. It's, it's um, an, an explained working process. You can find it in the chapter 7.4 of the further agreements within the contract. And um, it will be each year we will make that, of course, together with you, we will um, include that and make very clear um, agreements how to do that and how to use or how to select the top for example that will be uh, issued for, for the market studies for that year and i give back the word to arthur thank you uh, jantin so i'm sharing uh, my screen again now for the next topic, uh, what we are looking for in, a, in, in a, the tender profile. Um, just want to bear one second with me. Yeah, there we are. So uh, what we are looking for, um, with uh, this information you can also find um, in the tender announcement on the CBI website under consultancy assignments. Um, so we've made a quick uh, summary here for you. So firstly, it's very important to repeat once more that all the studies and the articles are, are about the European market. So that's very important. Um, then we are looking for uh, tenderers that uh, have good interviewing and statistical and quantitative research skills, because this is a big part of, uh, of our studies. Uh, it's an, about analyzing trade flows, among other things. Um, then, um, it's important to the ability that you have the ability to translate findings to the need of our target group. 
target group of SMEs that we've seen uh, during the last uh, part that uh, Jantine explained. Uh, and for this target group, it is especially uh, very important that the text in the, st in the studies is written uh, easy and easy to understand English, uh, what we call uh, English level B1. Um, furthermore, sector knowledge is very important. Uh, we have 14 sectors and uh, we've built up a lot of sector knowledge over the years. And a uh, big part of our studies is that we uh, transfer the sector knowledge to the users in developing countries. So we expect uh, the tenderers to have an international network in the sector that can be easily consulted during the research, uh, consisting of European importers, buyers, uh, sector experts and other stakeholders uh, specific to the sector that you're uh, tendering for. And lastly, skills in organizing, for example, the already mentioned focus groups or uh, presentations. Um, what we furthermore are looking for, um, um, it, it is important to note that it's possible to submit a proposal in a collaboration with other consultants. So um, we are asking quite a lot in our tender, uh, uh, statistical skills, interviewing skills, sector skills, some uh, people that are watching uh, right now maybe have all that knowledge in-house already. So they will probably do a, a, a tender as a main contractor only. Other maybe smaller companies will do it as a consortium. And there's also a third possibility. It's uh, working uh, with subcontractors. Uh, more information about this you can find also in the sector, uh, in the sorry, in the tender documentation. And that's in chapter 73117, submission of a tender in collaboration with other organizations. Um, then we have a couple of uh, tips that we want to share with you. So our tender has been published on tendernet, uh, www.tendernet.nl, which is the official uh, tendering platform of the Dutch government. Um, and we are, uh, as a Dutch government organization, uh, are obli obliged to uh, publish our tender on that website. There's a couple of things that are important to know. Um, the standard language is Dutch, but there is information as well uh, in English available. Um, I think that's very important to, to, to mention because we have uh, lots of uh, international uh, suppliers as well. But it's always, uh, yeah, you have to look a little bit for the, for the English information. Um, then another thing that's very important, um, if you are interested after this webinar, and you think that you want to make a proposal to make a CBI's market research, then we... Um, I recommend you that you make your tender not profile as soon as possible. Um, we have the experience of our four previous tenders that uh, the process to re register can take quite a lot of time. So uh, it's important to do that as soon as possible. And uh, after this uh, webinar, of course, download uh, the tender documentation and all of the annexes. Um, to prepare, make and submit your tender, um, well, it's important that you check in the first uh, step, we recommend that you check whether you meet the requirements of the assignments and uh, the requirements concerning the tenderer. Um, you can see that at the bottom of the page, uh, that's chapter three and chapter four. So if you meet these uh, requirements, um, then you should write your response to the tender um, uh, by answering the different award criteria. Uh, award criteria are in chapter five. And lastly, um, as all of our studies are in English, uh, we also ask you to uh, submit your tender proposal in English. Um, so how do we score the tender? Uh, there's a maximum of 100 points that can be obtained for a response to the different award criteria. Um, so roughly there's two big categories. The first one is quality and the second is financial, or you can say price. So the quality preferences will count for a maximum of 70 points and financial preference a maximum of 30 points. Um, you will see under the award criteria again in chapter five that uh, we will ask for a description of the market research team uh, with a maximum of 25 points, a description of the research approach, maximum of 20 points. And uh, there is an, a small assignment, uh, a writing assignment, um, and that's specified here as analytical and writing skills, and that's good for a maximum of 25 points. Um, then under financial preferences, we are asking you to submit a price list for 
are deliverables. There you can uh, win a maximum of 25 points. And uh, we ask to submit your uh, daily rate for additional work. And that's a maximum of uh, five points. Um, and then I would like to give the word back again to Jan Tien. And just a second. <laughs> Maybe you can take it back yourself. Um, and there we are. Thank you for uh, your patience, Jantin. You're, you're on mute, I think. So thank you, Arthur. Um, yep. So yeah, also um, quite important is the, the planning of um, the tender. So as um, Arthur mentioned before, it's already uh, published on the uh, 29th uh, of April. So it's there already on uh, Tendernet. Maybe a small remark also to Tendernet. If you do run into problems on Tendernet, they have a good uh, help desk that might help you to get through uh, the registration if you're not yet registered on uh, Tendernet. And um, so there you can find uh, all the information, but um, important date is the uh, 3rd of uh, June. That is the uh, closure round uh, of questions. There are two um, rounds of questions for the um, um, tendering if you have any questions. And uh, they can be submitted. Um, you will find um, in the time schedule in chapter 1.3 exactly the dates for the first round of uh, questions. And then, well, the, third, the second one is on the 3rd of June closing for the second round of questions. So please make use of that if you have any doubts and you want to ask questions regarding um, the tender document. And um, then on the 14th of June, we will be issuing the uh, memorandum of information. And then, um, well, second very important date is the 27th of June. Um, that is the deadline of um, uh, entering your information. So it should be there. Um, we do have experience that, um, we are depending on a system so it would be wise if you would not wait until the last moment or last day to um, try to upload all your documentation we do recommend to do that um, before because if you would run into any technical issues or problems then at least the help desk um, has time to help you so that you can submit your tender uh, in time so please make take uh, note of that and then um, there, of course, will be uh, the time um, for us to uh, to do um, to judge all the documentation that have been sent in. Um, we will take um, what well, it's in the summer months, but we will take uh, several weeks to do so. And then on the 9th of August, the announcement of the um, of the winning uh, party will be uh, made. Um, you will be informed. Um, all of you who will. Um, attend this tender will be informed and um, then we have the 24th of August deadline for the winning tendering to provide evidence requested by the tendering authority you will find uh, more information also about this this in the uh, tender documentation what what kind of evidence they could um, maybe ask for you to uh, provide them and then if uh, everything all goes well um, the intention is to start the date of the contract officially on the 2nd of November of this year. And um, yeah, then we can hopefully start a very fruitful um, cooperation together and uh, continue to make um, yeah, our very nice and most valued market um, intelligence studies. Um, I think this was um, this is the information which uh, we wanted to share with you and to give you uh, a better overview, hopefully, of what work we do within CDI, what work we do within market intelligence team, and why we do it, and um, especially also to give you more information um, about the tender that we are putting out now. So this tender, which is now running, and of course the upcoming tender in August. Um, because the, the, this information is also very useful for that tender. And of course, you will be informed when the other tender will be opened. So we have now um, time for you, if you wish, um, for your questions. 
um, about our presentation. We do have to make the um, small remark that we are not allowed maybe to give questions um, or answers to all the questions if it really concerns um, into that into the tender documentation. Then if we are not able to answer that, we um, want to uh, again uh, point out that you can have that moment to the tender authorities uh, mentioned in the documentation when you when we have the first and second round of questions. So please, if any questions, you can put them in our question um, box and um, we will try to answer them as best as possible. And for now, I would like to thank you also on behalf of Arthur for taking your time to listen to us and to join this webinar. We will share the presentation with you and we will put the recorded webinar on our website. Um, so there you can have a look back or for the people who are not able to attend today, they can listen to it. So, Thomas, do we have any questions? Um, yes, there are now coming up some questions. Uh, there were, uh, like, uh, already some questions which are answered already. And now I see some new questions. Uh, let me get back to one question we answered earlier. Uh, the question was if it's possible to apply for two uh, of these lots in this tender and then also participate in the upcoming tender for the remaining sectors and the answer is yes uh, that's possible so a maximum of two sectors for that you can apply for in this tender and a maximum of two sectors in the second tender later this year mm -hmm. so i i see another question coming in um it says, uh, it's clear stated that you, uh, one provider can be awarded two lots. Is it possible to join a consortium that is applying to a third sector and to be their subcontractor? Um, so that information is specific, it's uh, detailed um, within the tender documentation. So it's definitely in there. Um, and um, the way I understand it is that uh, what counts is whether you are um, uh, the main contractor. So, um, so the the two lot maximum is as a main contractor. So uh, there are more possibilities to uh, yeah to to react to the tender. But for the specific details, um, yeah, I would like to ask you to yeah to go through the tender documentation because it's definitely in there. So I hope that gives some indication. And then we have another question. Can one firm tender for two tenders in the different subsectors? Um, yes, so you can be, you can be, a, yeah, you can, for example, on this specific tender, you can uh, apply to, you can tender for two sectors. So uh, you could do apparel and home decoration, or you can do uh, tourism and outsourcing, or whatever combination works best for you. And then in the tender that we have in August, you can do the same. Yeah, we have um, also a question, how do you choose the countries you work with within the tourism sector? But the countries that we work in for the CBI projects are being by our, um, so we work uh, on different focus countries. And if it's by studies, it's through research um, where the most interesting countries come out of. Yeah, so, but basically for, for to uh, expound a little bit on that. So for CBI, um, um, for the market intelligence, there's no limitation. We, we can write about all developing countries as Jantin was mentioning early in our presentation. So. It's not really a choice to make. If there's um, uh, more tourism potential in, um, uh, let's say, um, India uh, instead of um, Kenya, then you can write also about uh, India, although it's not a CBI country. The list of CBI countries uh, is particularly re relevant for our projects. Um, so 
I'm hope I'm I'm not confusing people now, but uh, mm -hmm. CBI we we get a mandate from the Dutch government to start four-year development projects in countries, and that's a list of 24 countries that you can find on the CBI website. And of course, we pay in our studies as well uh, where we can. We pay as much as possible attention to the CBI project countries. These are um, important countries for us, but um, but we can write about all of the countries. So I hope that uh, answers the question. And then Arthur, we have the question about um, um, in the tender document, we have the focus group considered as a deliverable and how does this differ from organizing a focus group as part of the regular research process? Um, so, yeah, if you look into, uh, I think um, it's in the in the presentation as well. Uh, we have the working process, um, and uh, the research process. So what we what we ask in this tender, um, we have uh, so to say obligatory research parts. So we ask, I think, out of, on top of my mind, it's uh, a minimum of two interviews uh, for a particular study please, please look that up in the tender documentation it's in there and then we have uh, optional um, uh, research so the focus group um, for us it's a deliverable because um, it's something that we yeah that we see as as optional um, so we can request it uh, for example um, in year two and in year four let's let's say that we want to do a, a focus group uh, then we would like to, uh, from the tenderer, we would like to see their price, how much it costs to uh, to organize a focus group and to uh, to gather the, the the people, and then uh, together, uh, yeah, we set up the uh, we set up the goals of the focus group. So in that way, it is a deliverable uh, that we can request, or that maybe the next year we don't request, and then the year after we can request it again. So uh, that's that's the way it's different from the regular research process where we say each year you have to do desk research and field research and at least we want to see a couple of interviews in the field research so i hope that answers the question yeah and then we have um maybe um um so we know we mentioned um new studies updated studies and um the question is if we can distinguish the differences or can you elaborate on which lots would be considered new and which would be updates? So it's not that it's lots that need to be new or updated, but within the studies that we make, we can make the decision on a yearly basis whether we really want to have the complete study new as we call it, or that we want to have an update on the existing uh, study and on the existing study then there's a certain percentages that we would like to have then as updated within that study but that's something that um, on the, as I mentioned before in the yearly assignment that we do according to of course according to the tender uh, document is that would we decide w which studies are being updated or which studies will be made new so it's not based on lots but on studies And then we have a um, question, Arthur, about uh, countries, whether they are eligible to participate in the tender or not. Is there a restriction? Um, maybe you can answer that, Arthur. I don't believe that there's a restriction on the companies or the countries where the companies are based, or who can tender. Yeah, so when we speak about country list, it's about, uh, um, it's about the countries we write for, we write studies for. So that was mentioned, we write for developing countries in general and where possible we uh, pay special attention to the CBI countries. So um, I, as far as I know, we, we don't have any restrictions on countries that can participate in the standard because that's uh, as a supplier, but I'm also not 100% sure. So that I would recommend it uh, if you're interested to ask that question via Tendernet. And um, 
and then uh, our team will uh, look up the enter uh, if you cannot find it at least uh, within the in the tender do uh, documentation itself so okay. not 100 percent certain yeah. And then we have the question, how long does a contract run? It's, it's explained in the tender documentation, it's three years plus one year, as we name that. So the maximum is total of four years, and three years plus one year is that after three years, we can um, extend with one more year, or we can close the contract after three years. So that is so maximum then in the end is a four year contract but divided in three years plus one year extension yes or no depending on on it could depend on different reasons why we can um, do one more year or not so i see another question uh, according to the map in the slides there are no cbi projects in south america does that mean the region is not important for the market research um, so that does not mean that the region is not important for the market research um, because um, uh, that cbi doesn't have any projects in south america uh, doesn't mean that we we do not support uh, companies from south america actually we do have one project at the moment in uh, central america but we don't have any projects yet uh, in south america and uh, as a form of saying uh, it's even more important the market research because we do not have any projects on the ground there um, and you can also see that in the market uh, studies uh, we have for product project uh, product fact sheets um, we describe the competition and then very often uh, yeah companies in south america uh, countries in south america are part of the competition and are well uh, described in the studies as well and we have lots of readers as well in uh, in south america yes and then the estimated budget that we have showed in the presentation, the question is based on annual funding or consolidated over the four years. It's the amount um, that we shared with you on the um, uh, estimated budget is over a period of four years. Yes, over and then four years. Have, yeah, it's a period of so um, yeah. To make clear, it, it's over a period of four years. The amounts that have been showed in the uh, presentation. Okay. And then, Arthur, we have a question for actually. Um, I'm an entrepreneur from Bangladesh. Um, eagerly interested to submit a market research paper on the apparel sector. But is there any formalities regarding registration company in Netherlands or is it completely online basis? Um, so, um, yeah, it relates a little bit to the question about Moldova. Um, yeah. I'm supposing that uh, yeah, we work with companies from all over the world, uh, suppliers from all over the world. So, in generally, it should not be a, a problem to be um, to be based, uh, for example, in uh, in Bangladesh. And um, uh, you don't have to register a company uh, in the Netherlands. What you are writing, um, of course, you are being asked to write studies about the European market. Um, so that's, uh, uh, of course. We are looking for lots of um, expertise bundled together. So um, sometimes in some studies we write more about supplying countries. Sometimes in other studies we write more about the European market. But um, yeah, generally speaking, um, as mentioned as well, there's a couple of possibilities. Uh, you can register as a main um, uh, um, supplier. Uh, you can uh, register as a subcontractor uh, together with a uh, with an, another company or on an equal basis as a consortium so those are the, those are the the three main options and then it should not matter where your company is uh, based Good. 
then we have um, two questions but uh, by the same person, so I might uh, maybe good to combine them. Is there um, a limitation in participants within the consortium? And can individual experts join various consortia? Okay, so the, the first question, um, it's I think the easiest one. So there's not a, a limitation in the number of participants uh, within a consortium, not that I know of. Um, and can an individual expert join various consortia? That is a, a question I would ask in the via the official tendernet uh, procedure. Um, so that I, I don't have a, re a ready answer on that. Yeah, so please, uh, that question put into the uh, question runs, um, the official question runs of the uh, tender documentation. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have a question about um, a translation. So do we translate um, uh, studies? Yes, we, we certainly do. Uh, but specifically, um, if we have also the request from our project uh, program managers for certain countries, you have here the example of Spanish. We do translate certain studies which are relevant for the projects, for example. We are able to uh, translate them into Spanish or into French or whatever language that is, is um, for, for that target group at, the, at that moment uh, necessary. And if we do so, if we do translate our studies, we put the translation also on our website, on the CBI website, on the sector, on, so on sector level. And then uh, on the study, you can find then um, the translated um, studies. And these can be then used to all, if we, for example, translate them to Spanish, all the uh, Spanish speaking people from all the countries in the world can then read that study in that language. So um, at the moment, I know we have, for, for example, in the coffee sector, we have translated certain studies into French for a project that we have in um, INE in coffee. So you can have a look that we have posted them uh, or we have put them on the uh, website. So yes, we certainly do translations. Um, so then there's a question, uh, where can we get the, the tender tour uh, from a company that has joined a little bit later? Um, so all of the information is in the, the presentation that we just showed. So if you registered, you will get an uh, email copy. Um, I can also, um, maybe it's a good idea that I just show it on the website um, where, where you can find the tender announcement. Um, that's maybe even quicker. Yeah, I'll just. Share the CBI website. So now you see the CBI website. So this is the homepage, cbi.eu. On the homepage, you see we have four tiles, export to Europe, market information, topic of today, import opportunities, collaborate with us. So if you go to collaborate with us, and then the first topic is consultancy assignments. And if you click on consultancy assignments, here you see the topic of today, tender for CBI market intelligence studies. And this is the announcement. And in the announcement, there's a couple of links. Um, here is a link you can download the tender documents on Tendernet. So that's the answer to your question. So um, if you're interested, I definitely recommend you to do so. Thomas, we have any more pending questions that we could answer? Um, no, I think you you have answered many questions already. I've of course I've answered some in writing. And yes, okay. The question about uh, the consortium. Uh, uh, via consortium applying for a third sector, you already answered that, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, we did. Okay. Um, um, can individual experts join various consortia? That, that was a question that we recommended that you ask via Tendernet. 
then there's a question there about the rates. Uh, I'm not yes, sure if I understand. The, maybe the person can can uh, explain that question a bit more because my I do not understand it fully. Is the rate payable fully or partially? So yeah, generally we can say we are asking under financial preferences in the tender document, we're asking for a price list. So um, in that price list, tender is being expected to give prices for the whole tender period. So for four years. So um, the price that you give, uh, we will use that price in year one, year two, year three, year four. Um, there is a, um, a clause uh, for indexation. Um, but that's the only exception and then for the rest of the prices are fixed um, and the same counts for uh, the for the daily rate. Um, the daily rate is fixed unless it's being uh, indexed uh, and it's being changed for indexation. Yes, you explained the, the question, question is, uh, Arthur and uh, is, is the budget per contract or is it paid fully or part uh, part on parts? Uh, I think I can say I think I now understand what you mean and uh, okay we have a if you if you have are winning uh, the tender and you are, have a contract with us a framework contract then we have uh, each year we have a contract for the year that's coming for all the work that's done in that year and you can uh, send your invoices uh, for each batch so on on uh, on average it's not not exactly the same every year not exactly the same for each sector but on average the work is divided in three or four batches each year so if you have closed the batch for example for five studies then you can send your invoice for the five studies yeah so there's three or four invoicing moments per year yes yeah. and would you agree with the program manager responsible for the sector you agree year on year when these payment moments will be according to the deliverables of the studies. Okay. So I, Arthur, I think we have yeah. um, most of the questions I think answered. If any question is um, not fully answered um, for, um, for you, please put that in the uh, question round as mentioned in the uh, tender procedure. And uh, I give the floor to Arthur to close concerning also the time uh, to close the um, session. Yeah, so uh, thank you all for yeah for joining us uh, today. Um, it's been uh, yeah very good to see uh, the interest there is in uh, in our market studies. And um, yeah, I hope that we've uh, spurred your uh, interest a little bit and. Um, and of course, then, uh, yeah, we hope to see your uh, tender uh, proposals coming in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.